Hi everybody, it's Dr. Lisa Ann Homick from Homick Advanced Chiropractic and also Brain Sense Telehealth Self Discovery Sessions. And today I want to talk about my Netflix obsession. And if you've been following a few videos back, maybe a few weeks back, I said I wasn't going to watch Netflix anymore. And I was going to break myself of that binge watching habit because of course there's there's so much more I could be doing with my time. Um, in fact, I'm going to talk to you today about how uh, my obsession, without getting the company mad, what they're going to be mad because I'm going to tell you it's not good for the nervous system. Um, I did announce it a few weeks back that I was watching crime shows and I had to quit. They were gruesome. They were morbid. They were violent. Just They seemed to be popping up in my feed. Uh, they suggested to watch or trending now. So I just catch them and I'll start watching them. Um, I was up at night, not because I'm watching them. I do go to bed at a decent time. I was up at night pondering about the storylines. They're so out there. Um, why would the characters do what they do? This would keep me awake at night. This was too heavy on my brain. And your brain can't differentiate, you know. It's just busy. You make your brain busy, it's going to stay busy. Even though it's a TV show. So it was time to stop. And I, I announced it. I said, I'm not gonna binge watch anymore. And, um, oh, I can't get Netflix mad because it was also BritBox. There you go, okay. Forgot, I did watch one show on BritBox. Um, so, I did it again. Confession time. Uh, I decided instead of watching a crime show, I would watch a medical show. And it's still on. I think they just started their latest season in late September. And no, I am not going to wait up on a certain day, certain time to watch it or even catch it on, uh, uh, on demand. I'm just not going to do that. Um, why did I decide? I said, I decided to do that. Oh, a medical show. That's not a crime show. Completely different, of course. And by the way, I like to hear the big words. You know, keep my brain fresh. I've, you know, studied that in the past. Let's hear it again. Um, once again, I'm up at night, awake, thinking, overthinking, I suppose. This is fiction. Yet, my brain is overstimulated. The storylines are over the top. The characters are really annoying. Yep. The funny thing is, it they would pick and choose their morality. This is a medical show, okay? A drama, a medical drama. Uh, personalities going at it. So um, sometimes they would honor their patients' wishes and sometimes they would not. So I got tired of watching that. And when the series came to an abrupt stop on Netflix, I said, oh, whew. Oh, I was relieved. So I'm done. I might be going through a little bit of withdrawal because I need to find something else to do after office hours here. Because um, I wanted to avoid the news. I catch some headlines on my Google feed. We talk about a few things with people in the office, but I do not watch the news. So I'm thinking a little bit of entertainment in the evening as an escape. It could be a healthy escape. Nope. And we know it is still brainwashing. even though it's entertainment, it's fiction, 
there's always that underlying message there that may be helpful, maybe not. I ask you to grow your talent every day. We need your full participation in the world, and you cannot do that with an impaired brain. And I ask you, if you've got a talent, you're good at something, good at more than one thing, I hope you're good at more than one thing, but you have a talent, you need to grow it every day. You should be a little bit better tomorrow than you are today because we need to benefit from your talent. You should be sharing your talent. I speak about this. You want a healthy body, healthy brain, and make a very positive contribution to the world. I say that, and let me tell you, sitting in front of a screen watching a show does not grow my talent. I'm in front of a different screen right now. Um, hopefully, educational videos are allowed. I recommend something that's educational, that stimulates your brain and drives you to do more with your day. So hopefully I'm doing that. So I wrote a trilogy a few years back, you know, non uh, fiction, fiction uh, storyline, a little uh, uh, just an attempt at writing a book and yes that that was a challenge and there's something to be said about entertainment that's that's really fun very inspiring so I I, I was hoping to do that I wrote a fiction story and I wanted it to be realistic but not corny not goofy suspenseful but not gross uh, it had camaraderie, it had family in it, that kind of a storyline. And at times I got bored myself with my own story, my own fiction writing, my own attempt at writing a book. So I even, I got bored and I can do whatever I want. It's my story, I'm the author. Um, but I got stuck, I got writer's block and I have a little bit of writer's block because I haven't, I, I finished it, but I still got a little idea swirling and I haven't, I haven't touched on it in quite a while. Uh, the funny thing is in this story, we had, the characters had a small child and when you have a small child, you can't run off and save the world from, with your adventures and mysteries. So I thought, so I have to take time. The characters have to take care of their child in between saving the world with their adventures. So that is reality. We can't ignore our own nuclear families. And I try to incorporate that into the story. I, I get stuck every now and then. So we'll see. We'll see how uh, I do with additional stories. Let's get back to the topic I was talking about here. Um, the Netflix obsession. Let's talk about other obsession, obsessions. Because if you've got an obsession that's not working for you, like what I just talked about, um, it is stealing energy from your nervous system. It's going to weaken you if other things in your life are happening to weaken your nervous system. And this also is happening. There might be a major consequence to your health. So let's Let's sit back and ponder this a little bit because your brain perceives what it perceives and translates and decides if the nervous system needs to kick in the sympathetic nervous system fight or flight or not. And the example would be watching a scary movie. You scream your head off. You know it's made up. You know it's silly. You know you're sitting in your own living room on your own couch or a theater chair, you know you're safe, but your brain gets that rush. That's kind of fun, temporarily, sure. That's why we go to the movies. <laughs> movies are short-lived, un unlike binge watching, when it's every day, hours and hours and hours. Some people stay up all night 
binge watching. So maybe I need to study this research. Binge watching compared to watching one little film and leaving it alone. Binge watching compared to watching a show and waiting the whole week to go by before you catch the next episode or or the whole summer goes by until the new season starts. I guess you could call that a little rest period for your brain. But um, if there are obsessions, they are stealing energy from your own brain. Here's another example. The bear or the squirrel scenario. I talk about this. You, there's rustling in the bushes. It could be a bear. It could be a squirrel. And if you automatically say, it's a bear, what's your body doing going into fight or flight? The, your heart is racing. Your lungs are grabbing more oxygen. You're getting more blood flow to your legs instead of your digestive tract. That's the bear or the squirrel when you always think everything is a bear. But if you take a few seconds to investigate and it is only a squirrel, <sighs> calm down. Yeah. So maybe we didn't even have to go into the bear scenario because if everything in your life feels like a bear, the moment you get up and go throughout your day and deal with people until you go home and get ready for bed and then you get up and do it all over again, if everything in your life is a bear, you're being robbed of essential energy that could be used somewhere else in your body, in your life, in, in the way you interact with the world. If you've been thinking about somebody negatively, somebody that you had a falling out with and you're, you're thinking about that for years, and that person is completely, completely unaffected, they're going on with their life, they might, they may not even know you're upset with that, with him or her. You're holding this all in and, and holding a grudge. You're the one moping. You're the one angry. And the other person's not even affected, not even thinking about you, didn't have a thought about you in years. Who is suffering from a severe energy loss? That's an obsession just burning out your nervous system. Don Joseph Goey wrote a book called The End of Stress. It's on my recommended reading list for the folks who come into my office. I'm going to give you one fun statistic out of his book. It's a short paperback, easy read. It's fun to read. It's very uh, positive and optimistic, and it helps you work through stress and maybe even end certain stresses. The End of Stress by Dr. Don Joseph Goey. Here's the statistic. If you worry about something, 85% of the time it never happens. 85% of the time. Now the other 15%, if something happens, if it actually occurs, something you've always worried about, it happens. 79% of the people studied, surveyed, said they handled it on their own in such a way beyond their own expectations, they impressed themselves with how well they handled it. That's 79% of the people who actually had to face something. So 85% of your worries never happen. Of the 15% the that do, 79% of the people said, got through it, handled it. That means 97% of the time, you didn't have to deplete your nervous system of valuable energy. Yeah. So, The End of Stress, fun book, easy to read, I highly recommend it. That's all I want to talk about on today's video. I just wanted to give you my confession here. I am going to put my time into something else that's more useful, and I want you to do the same thing. If there's something you want to improve, in your life, go for it. Absolutely. And if you want to help your brain take it in differently and face a challenge differently, then use the Brain First Protocol 
to get you there. How you move your brain, how you feed your brain, and how you talk to your brain, these are the foundational ways of how to boost your life, boost your health, uh, boost your experiences where you really say this was meaningful and rewarding. So check out the website createpurpose.com. Give yourself some tender loving care, TLC, tender loving chiropractic, and look for the next video. Thanks for watching.